Hi everyone, we're going to look a little bit at the Polonaise in A-flat major by Frédéric Chopin, one of the most famous Polonaises for sure. And we're going to look a bit at things that you can do, things that you should do, and things that you shouldn't do. So there's always a, a freedom in Chopin to play in different ways because Chopin played his music in different ways every time he played it. He was so much more of an improviser than a composer. But we'll have a look at this, as well as some things that will help you practice this. So these things here could be a little bit challenging. All of these. Especially the third one. So I would recommend uh, placing the beats uh, very well. Especially the third of these notes. So. instead of just having and you're not quite sure where the beats are so mostly that third and and yes we do want to um, that's the way I've heard it the most uh, according to the crescendos that's what we would do right is to go all the way to the first beat and not so much so same thing. So, common mistake. Well, this one's a little harder because we have uh, a non-chromatic thing here. G. And you can use the fingering you have most likely in the score, which would be 3 2, 3 1, 4 1, 5 2. What I like to do, and you can try this, is on those two notes that are, that are non chromatic, 5 1, 1 becomes the pivot, and 5 2. So 5 on both. I just use note as a pivot. So it's kind of like this. Four, three, four, five, five. That's just worked the best for me. Okay, another thing that's really important is the overall rhythm. It's important to not lose connection with the three, four. So one, two, three, 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 one, two, Especially um, in uh, Rubinstein's interpretation of this piece, he does something which I did not do right now, but he really goes forward every time you have this. Instead of going, including this one, although sometimes these can widen and that's a good idea. satisfying so listen to those recordings and see if that's something that fits with your your interpretation of this piece because it can make it, it can make it uh, give it a whole lot more sense so you have to decide where uh, how to group this you know So this 
consider in this, in, in pretty much all the polonaises, we always have this rhythm. That's a characteristic of the polonaise, like... It's a little bit different in that uh, it's it's kind of hidden, you know. We have this, so it's a and that, but we do have this in the left hand. The thing is, do we really want to do it square like this? Because a lot of times, what you might hear is. Because this adds to the heroic uh, style when, when you put the notes a little bit tighter and there's something very Polish about it. So it's much better if you do. And see, there's a way of doing this instead of doing. That's not what I did. If the left hand is late, not just the right hand, but this E flat here, then we're gonna have ta-ta-ta. We still have the ta-ta-ta of the polonaise. Whereas if you do this, it just sounds like you're going to same thing. So you can try that as well by doing the left hand a little bit later. So this this really adds to that kind of heroic uh, bravado that that this piece um, requires. Now with that, okay, the the worst thing you can do with this is the opposite. Okay, so I've heard this sometimes. Don't do triplets. That's the worst. Thing. It sounds like triplets, not good, very bad, because that's not at all going with the character of the polonaise. Okay, it doesn't sound very good either. This is so lyrical. So you can play around. So that's an answer to this. of the same thing. So when you start it, you insist a little bit, even if it's a little bit less on, on the dynamic. consider about Chopin and and the Polonaise and Poland at the time is that Chopin at a young age he left the country and during this period Poland was invaded by all the countries around it and it ceased to exist so he couldn't even return back to his country because there was no more Poland at the time. So there was a sort of um, really uh, feeling of um, of, of pride, but also pain in this, uh, like a nationalistic pride. Uh, not only that, but he had a lot of friends there as well that he was cut off from. And so this, uh, this is something that it's, it's worth thinking about a little bit in a lot of Chopin's music. So I do this with three, four, five, four, five. This is one of the 
the most complicated passages if you play it like this. And I explained this in another video, so the trick, find that video uh, if you want a better explanation than this one. I'll just do it quickly, but you can take an F in the, in the left hand. first beat because we're gonna have a yum pa 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 yum pa 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 again this is our polonaise with a yum pa 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 <coughs> so it's normal that instead of having we have something more yum pa da dum dum pa da dum a little bit less square so the first eighth note is a little bit longer and then the sixteenth notes are slightly tighter yum so this is what crescendo here, what we would do is we would start in the right hand with not too much left hand and then we start to bring out more uh, of the upper voices going towards the lower voices finishing at the end with all of them so let's say let's just try this that's the top the two top first voices three to the entire right hand from this to all kinds of places when you're trying to make a very even crescendo start with the upper voices and gradually add the lower ones Thank you. 
it's interesting, it's one way of interpreting it, but it sounds disconnected. <laughs> Come to my master class, we're going to do the whole thing. <laughs>